through 17. 15 says, and, and y'all know the rest of the story. Y'all go 2 through 14. Amen. Y'all go ahead on. The Lord sent the prophet um, to tell Jehoshaphat what to do because Jehoshaphat was, you know, he was fearful. He didn't know what was going on because not only are these two armies against me, but there are other armies that they have gathered and all of these people are the enemies of God. They're the enemies of God because everything about them, amen, is opposite of everything that is God. Y'all don't hear my heart. There's no love. Come on here. There's no compassion, no charity. Come on here, y'all. I was thinking about this today. I was thinking about some things. I was thinking about some people in the body of Christ who are great in their own right, right? Um, and great in their own minds. But what makes you great in the body of Christ is not how many people you can slay. Come on here. Um, to the floor. It's not about how many, how accurate you are prophetically. It's not about, um, glory be to God, um, the anointing to cast out demons. All of that is fine and good. But if your heart is ratchet, come on here. If there's no charity, come on here. If there is no benevolence, no love, no forgiveness, you don't hear me. You can't harbor unforgiveness against one individual in your heart and think that the works you do are pure and clean. Y'all hear me? I'm in the word. But, Apostle, we always have issues and we always have a God that's available. Come on here, y'all, to help us to overcome. So y'all know the story. People done gathered together against them and they're scared. You know what I'm saying? Judah and Jerusalem is scared. Amen. Their praise and their peace is in, in jeopardy. Amen. Their praise and their peace Amen. is in jeopardy. And I'm not talking about their hallelujah. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the praise of life that shines the light of glory on God. I'm talking about living a life of celebration at all times. I'm talking about living a life of joy, being able to rejoice even when you don't think you won the battle. Y'all don't hear my heart. Their praise and their peace was in jeopardy. Listen, listen. 15 says, and he said, hearken. I told y'all that word hearken. Amen. That means to pay close attention, to observe, to pay close attention, listen, with the very intent to do everything that you've heard and not just that that feels good to you. Listen. He says, hearken ye all Judah and ye in inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat, thus said the Lord unto you, be not afraid nor dismayed. Don't you walk around here scared and chickened up. Don't walk around here like you are defeated, that dismayed, a man, you walking around in fear, like you're already defeated. You're walking around discouraged and feeling hopeless. Y'all hear my heart. He said, be not dismayed, nor be, di uh, I mean, he said, be not afraid, nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude. Come on here, y'all. Don't be discouraged by how many people you thought were in your corner. When you looked up, they weren't in your corner. They were forming their own corner against you. Y'all hear me? Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged because, come on, I'm talking to leaders right here, because everybody that um, patted you on the back and told you that you were all and anointed. Come on here. And when it came time for you to lead, they wouldn't follow your leadership. When it came time for you to hold them accountable, all of a sudden they got a new leader. Do not be dismayed. Don't be afraid. Don't be fearful. Amen. For the great multitude, he said, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Y'all hear me? This fight don't belong to you. Verse 16, he says, tomorrow, go ye down against them. Come on here. Now you can, and this is what setback looks like. <laughs> Sometimes you got to go down. Sometimes you got to go back. Y'all hear my heart? He said, and, and listen, some of us are too prideful to step back. Heard the Lord say, I want you to go all the way back to the beginning. And then some doors were left open somewhere. There was a window, as the old folks say, that was hitched up somewhere. Y'all hear me? There was a crack in my foundation somewhere. There was a broken glass in one of my window panes. In my window pane. In my one of my window panes had a crack in it. Y'all hear my heart? And then there was a crack somewhere in a brick. There was a crack in the door. The door wasn't aligned right. Y'all hear my heart? And then one said, I want you to go back to the beginning. I want you to go back and visit the original mission and vision that I gave you, the original assignment, the original mantle, the original task. I want you to go back and I want you to study that mission and vision. And then I want you to even go back. Look, can, can I help y'all? God is so deep and in depth. And can, I want you to go back to the original colors that I said to you in ministry wise. I want you to go right back. And can I help y'all? They were simple. Red, white, and black represented um, the blood. Again, the atonement of the blood. To, the white, of course, represented the purging 
purification and the purification in that black, not representing death, but power. You don't hear my heart. The power that comes forth out of purging and the purging or the purity that comes forth as a red blood being shed upon your life. Y'all hear my heart. I want you to go back to all of that. And I want you to sit there till I tell you to move. Be still and see the salvation of the Lord. And y'all know what he told me? Because there you will find where the window was left open. Y'all hear my heart. And that's what God is telling them. I want you to go down. He said, tomorrow go ye down against them. Come on here, y'all. Behold, um, I want you to observe. I want you to be quiet, be still, and just watch. He said, they come up um, by the cliff of Z's. Y'all hear my heart. They're going to come up by the cliff of Z's. Amen. And that Z's right there um, is, is a low place. Amen. On the side of a mountain. It ain't the top of the mountain. Amen. It's a low place in a mountainous region. I want you to go down to the low place of the mountainous region, right? And he says, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. Amen. Um, and then he says, um, ye shall not need to fight in this battle. There it goes again. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Do not fight this battle. Put your sword in its sheath. Put your bullets, take them out of the chambers of your gun and put them back in the bullet box. Put that gun back in its safe box, back at the top of the closet, in the back of the corner, in the wall somewhere. You don't hear my heart. Take that knife. Come on here out of your garter belt. Take that knife, take that Swiss blade out of your garter belt. Get that razor blade from under your tongue. Y'all hear my heart speaking those words that are sharp and that will cut asunder. Take that razor blade out of your mouth. Take those brass knuckles off of your hands. Y'all don't hear my heart. Put every one of your weapons back. Put your slingshot back. Put your little smooth five rocks back. You don't hear my heart. Put back your tongue. Put back every single weapon, said the Lord. Come on here. If you keep your peace on you, you will be tempted to engage your enemy in battle. And it's not your battle. And so the scripture says right here, you shall not need to fight in this battle. Then he said, set yourselves and stand ye still and see the salvation of the Lord. Y'all hear me? To set yourself means to put yourself in the right mindset, to take on the right attitude, to sit still and not make a move. Amen. He said, set yourselves. These are the three commandments. Again, these are the three charges for this battle right here. Come on here, y'all. Amen. It was, it was four of them, but we're going to talk about this three right here. Because that fourth one is only possible if you do these three right here. Because some of y'all are running around, praise is my weapon. And y'all running around singing about the beauty of the Lord and y'all clapping till your hands fall off and you're going to dance to your feet and you're dancing on your ankles. Some of y'all are dancing on your knees. Some of y'all have broken every chandelier in the place. Come on here, turn up all the people's carpet. Hit me. Screaming and hollering and making squeaking and squawking and making noise. And that's not necessarily praise. Y'all have hit my heart. But before you can get to the true praise of the Lord, you're going to need to do this right here. You need to set yourself. You need to renew your mind. You need to change your attitude. You need to change your mindset about the battle that you're looking at and the enemies that you see surrounding you. Let me tell you something. With that multitude of, of, of enemies standing before you and to the side of you, there's one place that not one of those enemies can get if you in the Lord, and that's behind you. What? Isaiah 58 says that when you go forth, that your righteousness will go ahead of you, and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. So the enemies around you can't come but so close. Because your righteousness or your steadfastness or let me just break that righteousness down. Integrity and honesty. Your integrity and your honesty stands before you. You don't hear me? And it don't matter how thick that enemy army gets. It won't be able to touch you. If it comes close enough to touch you, it's because it's time for you to take it out and it's not your back. Y'all hear my heart. It's not your battle. He said, set yourselves. Amen. Stand ye still. Y'all hear my heart. And that, th th listen, this is the good thing. Stand ye still means to just stop. Just don't do anything. 
Just stay right there. But the possibility do I'm about to praise my way through. Honey, shut your mouth. Just let your life be the praise. Y'all hear my heart. Honey, put your hands in your pockets. Sit on those jokers if you have to. Put them on some baby mints or something. You know how we put the baby some mints on so they can't scratch up their face? That's their way of, the fingers are praising the Lord by scratching that baby's face. Honey, put you some baby mints on. Don't let your hands do anything right now. Y'all hear my heart? Put your own feathers on your own feet so that you won't be apt to traipse yourself out there to that battle. Right? He said, stand still. That means to make no move whatsoever. But some of y'all, some of us in the body, are so afraid of what the multitude says if we don't move. Oh, she's fearful. She don't know the Lord. She ain't anointed. I mean, she all right, but she ain't strong enough to do the job. Y'all hear my heart. I done done the doggone thing. And I done overcame some, un some unovercomable stuff had it not been for the Lord. Can I tell y'all how I did that? Standing still. Standing still also means to shut up. And then to be quiet, just don't say it. If you're not praying and talking to God about his word, just be quiet. And don't let yourself be engaged in conversation. It's the beginning of your battle. And then listen, listen. Then he said, stand still. That means no movement, no progression. He said, and see the salvation of the Lord. And to see means that you experience this salvation right here. That you not only experience it, but because of your experience, you become the witness or the proof that God is truly a savior. That God is truly able to save, to rescue, to, to deliver his people out of troubles and sickness. Come on here, y'all. And sin. Listen, he said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And can I help y'all? Salvation doesn't just mean rescue, deliverance, and saved, um, or being rescued out of something, being saved out of something. It doesn't just mean to be delivered or to, to be conveyed from one place to another for the purpose of your safety. But salvation means soundness. And that soundness means that mentally and emotionally and physically you are complete in the Lord. And I want you to stand still. Don't move until you see your full identity in me. Y'all hear my heart. Look, he said, uh, um, uh, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not. Nor be dismayed. There's that second time. He says, don't walk in fear. And don't be discouraged. There's the second time he says that. Right? And then he comes back and he says, um, tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. Yo, hear my heart. So you don't move until the Lord himself tells you to move. And if you don't hear him say, I, I am with you, or I will be with you, honey, I don't care what nobody said, don't you make a move. Amen, because y'all know, got them fun little prophets out there that tell you that the Lord say, make a move right now. But if that joker didn't hear God say, I'm with you, <laughs> don't you make a move. You stay your behind right there. That's a false prophet prophesying out of their flesh and their emotion and how they're feeling at that moment. Prophesying out of their mind. Come on here, you know how some folks sing out of their nose. They're prophesying out of that natural part of them and not that spiritual part. Don't you make a move until you hear those words right there. I am with you. Y'all hear my heart. All right then, that's what the Lord said, amen. He said that um, your enemies want you to spend valuable time trying to prove your sonship. And your sonship doesn't just mean that um, God is your heavenly father or your daddy is your daddy and your mom is your mama. Amen. Sonship is your relationship with the father. Not how God relates to you, but how you relate to him. Amen. Your relationship with him, how you respond to him. 
Amen. And so he told me to tell you that they want you to spend valuable time trying to prove your sonship. If you spend time trying to prove your sonship to your enemies, that's the that that's less time that you get to spend with your father. And it's in the presence of your father that you learn your true identity. It is in the presence of your father that you learn your lineage and you learn your, your, your um, heritage. It is in the presence of your father where you learn the legacy that's being left behind from generation to generation. Right? He says they want to pull you out. Amen? He says, and they want you to prove that you are worthy. Come on here, y'all, that you are worthy of your inherited birthright. He says, do not engage in the battle. The battle is to get you out of place and get you out of position. If you find yourself trying to prove to others that you are worthy to be who God created you to be, that you are worthy. Come on here, preacher. The next time you preachers go preach, amen, you are not going to give up, get up and give us a dissertative. I don't know if it's a word or not, but if it's not, it is now. Amen. And give us a dissertated speech about who you are, how anointed you are, how great you are, and then give us your testimony of how you got that great. You are not going to get up there and prove to us that you've been through hell and hot, high water, high, hot water, in order for you to gain the anointing that you have. Again, you're not getting up there to do that because when you do that, it becomes a wet blanket that squeeze it. If you if you squeeze and twist that wet blanket, piss comes against God's will. Again, I'm in the Word. The Scripture said in in um, the Book of Kings and the Book of Chronicles, tell the men not to piss against the wall, and that wall is the place where they met God for prayer. Don't come to me with no fake stuff. Don't come to me with no foolishness that you are not ready to be free from. Don't come to me making vows that you have no intention of upholding. Why? Because what you say, don't get up there and preach my word and preach the people happy. Come out here and then not live what you preach. Because what you preach comes back to overtake you, Apostle, you lied. First Corinthians 9 and 27, for this cause I bring my body under into, so, um, under into subjection, lest by any means I myself become a castaway. Unless I myself, a man, become subject to, a man to the word that I have preached, you don't hear my heart. A man, unless I myself be overtaken because I refuse to live what I preach. So y'all not going to get up there and spend all that time proving to folks that you're worthy to be up there. If you weren't worthy, God wouldn't have put you there. But Apostle, um, Apostle Deacon such and Bishop so-and-so invited me, and who gives a flying hell? What heaven do they hold to put your soul in? What hell do they hold for your soul to shun? Not one. You ought to be grateful to God that you're there. But they ought to be grateful to God that you obey God. Y'all don't hear my heart. Why? If he sent you there, something is about to go down that's going to make that place better. And I don't care what that joker's name is. How long they've been in ministry. How rich they are. How many billions and millions of dollar heirs they are. None of that matters to me. Let me see the fruit of your natural life. That part of the fruit that you keep hidden under the tarp. Let me see that right there. Y'all hear my heart. Some of y'all fall for anything because a joker sound good and a joker had a get rich quick scheme. Amen. And because they got rich quick and God didn't have a hand in that foolishness. Y'all hear my heart. Some of y'all follow them in spite of what you see and hear. Because you want to be on that platform with them. You want to be recognized as great as they are. You're already great. And you're recognized in that greatness right where you stand. All right then, y'all. I'm not going there, Matthew chapter number 3, verse number 4. Amen. The devil tried to pull Jesus out of place. Y'all know the story. Um, if you be the son of man, a son of God, amen, um, uh, and, and you can find it in Luke chapter 4, and you can find it in Matthew chapter 4, verse number 3, and verse number 4, and you can find him saying, right when Jesus came out um, of the cotton-picking dog on 40 days of fasting, the scripture said, and he did eat nothing. Amen. And he was unhungered. Y'all hear my heart? And 
it says when he came out, the tempter was standing there. So you're going to be, your flesh is going to be hungry for you to make a move when the Lord tells you to move after you take the season to stand still to see his salvation. And the devil is going to be there to tempt you with opportunity and to tempt you with ministry engagement and to tempt you with platforms and to tempt you with money and to tempt you with this and to tempt you with fame and to tempt you with a new husband and to tempt you with a new wife and all that other good stuff right there. Hear me. Jesus responds, if you be the son of man with your little hungry self, with your little thirsty self, hey man, take these old stones and turn them into bread so that you won't be hungry anymore. And Jesus' immediate response came straight out of the book of Deuteronomy. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Man don't make a move until God speaks that move. Y'all don't hear my heart. Amen. Adam didn't name everything God created, the animals. He didn't name it till God said name it. I'm certain that in his mind he was thinking, that dragon, I don't know what that is, but that thing looked a little crazy with fire coming out of its mouth. What is that thing right there with a hole in the top of his head? And why is water shooting up out of it? You know, I hear my heart. But he couldn't call it what he wanted to call it. God had to speak a word that gave him the authority. I've spoken the word. Now you move it what I say. Y'all hear my heart. That's what Jesus said. Man lives. A man by every word that is proceeded out of the mouth of God. And y'all listen to me when I tell you this. A man, every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Every word that comes forth, and that alone is what you move by. Sons know their inheritance because they take time to study their family tree. And the Bible is your family tree. Y'all ain't got to go to prove me one, two, three um, DNA people to find out who you are. At this point, it don't matter. I'm trying to trace down my ethnicity so I can figure out where these attacks are coming from. Can I help y'all? These attacks are coming, and if they're penetrating you and it's not your battle, they're coming because you're not in place. You found a new shelter. You, 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 you're hiding under something or someone else. Come on here, y'all. That doesn't have the capacity to cover you. Come on, McDougal, get up out of here. Amen. Um, he also said that the true intent... A band um, of this battle is to get you to question your true identity and your true place in Christ and the kingdom of God. To get you to question if you are worthy. To get you to question if you're saved. To get you to question um, if God has graced you. To get you to question if you've been anointed. To get you to question. Listen now. I'm telling you, and y'all are going to be messed up. And can I tell you why? Because the greatest device that the devil is using right now, the greatest device, and a device is simply a, a plan or a method. It's a trick. It's a tactic of the devil, a man, or of the wicked and the evil to get you to do a thing that you ordinarily would not do. And listen, I heard the Lord say that the greatest device, that one of the devices and the greatest device of the devil in this battle right here, a man is to release voices that you trust, who will release a word to cause you to abdicate, come on here y'all, your position in the body of Christ, to cause you to abdicate, to publicly renounce to publicly stand up, turn your back, and walk away from your birthright. And that's what this battle is about. We are in a time, I don't want to call it a season, it's too short. Amen, two or three months is, three months is too short. I don't want to call it a season. I don't want to call it a season because 60 minutes is too short. Amen, I want to call it a time because it's infinite. Amen. It has no beginning and no end. Because it's in him. This is a time of God's divine providence. And some of you know we've been talking about it for a minute. And that divine providence, amen, is God's protective care and his protective guidance for your life. You want to know what that looks like? You go straight over to Psalm 91. 
You pick you any division up out of there, any division out of the book of Psalms, and you're going to see what divine providence looks like. David said, I once was young, but now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. I've never seen God neglect the righteous. I've never seen him turn his back. I've never seen him walk away. I've never seen him reject the righteous. Nor have I seen his seed begging for bread. Y'all will hear my heart. If when you don't know who you are, listen, listen, listen. Prince Harry, bless his sweet little heart. Ain't got a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of. But as long as he was a part of that royal family, as long as he was a part of the royalty and that royal family, as long as he was a part of that kingdom, he never wanted for anything and only had the best of everything. And that's what the manifestation of God's promise looks like. You live where you want to live and you ain't got no rent and no utilities and no mortgage to pay. You ride in what you want to ride in, drive what you want to drive in, and you don't pay the note or you didn't have to pay for it. You don't keep the insurance and the maintenance on the doggone thing. You just go out there and pick your car and get in it and boom, there you go. And that's what divine providence looks like. The manifestation of the promises of God that you have crossed over. Come on here. You have finally crossed over into the place that we call promise. Doesn't mean that you got 500 million in your bank account. It just means that if you need 500 million, you have an unlimited access. Y'all hear my heart. When you know who you are, your bank account doesn't have to say 500 million for you to be able to acquire, obtain, and attain that which you are physically in need of. Y'all hear my heart. I'll give you all the testimony when the Lord takes us out of this standstill season. Amen. And so he said one of the devices is that he was sending entrusted voices, people whose voice you trust, um, people who you trust prophetically, you trust their relationship with God. Amen. And he said they would be releasing words and you say, Apostle, that's a lie. First, let me um, tell you um, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 12 through 15. And I'm just not going to turn over there. Y'all write it down and go study the entire chapter. Amen. And what happens is, is that he says um, that for this cause, this is Paul, for this cause, I'm the apostle that I am. I'm the hard, raw, rude of speech apostle that says it like it is and, and that does it like it was like it's ordered to do. I plant joker that doesn't change God's way. You'll hear my heart. And he said, the reason that I don't do that is because there are many false apostles, many false prophets and teachers out there who are waiting to lead you astray. He said, for this cause, he said, listen, no wonder. For if Satan can translate himself into the angel of light, how much more than his ministers, those of righteousness, how much more can the people who really work for the devil translate themselves and make themselves look like they work for God and they work on your behalf? Oh, I, I, I didn't write the dog on thing. Amen. And so um, he said that right there. And then if you go back to the book of Numbers, and I'm not going back over there, um, but if you go back to the book of Numbers, chapter 22, 23, uh, we find the prophet of God. Y'all hear me? We find the prophet of God, created by God to be a prophet, called and chosen by God to be a prophet to that nation. Y'all hear my heart. And to other nations. He would have been able to prophesy salvation. Come on here to Balak and his kingdom and all the kingdoms around. Somebody in those kingdoms will have accepted the Lord as their savior. Had Balaam been on his job to be the prophet of God to the nations instead of being the prophet of God, worried about how he looks, what platform he's on and how much money he can put in his pocket. Y'all better hear the heart of God on tonight. Amen. And so he, he sins, and the thing that pisses God off, y'all hear my heart. God is not mad because of Balaam's ability to prophesy. God is mad because Balaam had the audacity to ask God, could he touch that dirty money? Y'all hear my heart? Listen, the joker said, there's a nation that aggravates the seesaw piss water out of me. This is what Balak is saying to, so he sent messengers to say to Balaam. They are really aggravating me. These people are getting on my last nerve because it's a whole lot of them. And whatever this God is that they serve, this fellow really has their back. 
And I'm about sick of them. I'm sick of them dancing and rejoicing while the rest of us are looking crazy. I'm sick of these people multiplying and increasing in every area of their lives. And we are decreasing in every area. Y'all don't hear my heart. So what I need you to do, prophet of the most high God, who is 100% accurate every time you open up your mouth, I need you to get with those people right there and prophesy against them. I want you to prophesy those people under a curse. Y'all don't hear my heart. I want you to release a prophetic word. And listen, can I tell y'all that Balak knew something that Balaam didn't know about himself as a prophet. Balaam didn't understand his identity because the true prophets of God come on here. And a true prophet is a joker who was born to be a prophet. A joker that was appointed to be a prophet before the foundation of this world. Before he was in his mama's womb. You don't hear my heart. That joker right there carries a tongue that looks like the heart of God so that whenever he opens up his mouth to speak the honor that rests on the prophet, the ascension gift the ministry gift, the gift of Jesus Christ as a prophet that gift to the nations come on here, whatever that prophet says, God has to honor y'all don't hear me I don't think Balaam understood that just yet but King Balak did if he prophesies that I heard, he was an accurate prophet. That ain't cause he's anointed. That's cause that was what he was created to do. He can be accurate and never be repentant. And give me a little contamination. You know, he's gonna throw a lie to in the mix. He's gonna throw a little deception and a little manipulation in the mix. But for the most part, he'll be 100% accurate. And none of what I just said made sense. Y'all hear my heart. And I want you to prophesy against these people. Why? Because they're going to adhere to the prophetic release you make. They're going to hearken. They're going to listen with the intent to obey. And when you look up, they will have already carried out the assignment. Come on here. And I know that it's going to be outside of the will of God. And as a result of that, and by virtue of who God is, y'all hear my heart. <laughs> I get to legally attack them because they moved out of that safe place. They left from under the camouflage. Come on here, y'all. Or the feathers of God. They removed themselves, y'all hear my heart, out of that secret place of God. They moved out of that house called God. Y'all hear my heart. And it said, I'll give you X amount of monies if you do the doggone thing. This dumb bunny prophet says, let me go holler at God. And let me tell y'all why it was easy for Balaam to holler at God. Because not all of God's people were doing right. Not all God's people were living righteously. Not all of them were living holy like they knew who God was. Come on now, they're just coming out of Egypt. Amen, they're still in the midst of the wilderness. Y'all hear my heart, not all of them recognized who God is, the God of their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Not all of them recognized that, and so not all of them observed the true God, the living God. And Balaam knew that, especially by virtue of whatever God gave him to give to them. Y'all don't hear my heart. So it was easy for him. Oh, they ain't doing right no how. Let me go on over here and ask God, can I make this quick few dollars over here? Let me go ahead and take this engagement right here to shut this on down right here to just keep those people right where they are. Let me go tell these people what they want to hear. So once they hear what they want to hear and once they follow what they want to follow, it will be to their own demise. And God told him, look here, sir, send them people away. And I ain't got to go deep in that. Y'all go over there and study the doggone thing. At the end of the day, the angel of the Lord that the donkey saw or the Bible call it the ass. The, the, the angel of the Lord that the ass saw wasn't coming after the ass. He was coming after the rider, Coming after the prophet. And God is coming after the prophet. That's why y'all better be still. God is coming after the prophets who are not prophesying his word. Y'all hear me. Y'all go to Ezekiel 13 and hear what the Lord said. 
Joker hadn't had time to come to me in prayer. Joker hadn't had time to spend time with me in prayer. Joker hadn't had time to communicate with me and just sit in fellowship and just be in my presence. Joker hadn't had time to pray or study. Joker hadn't had time to obey because he hadn't had time to study and know how to obey. If that joker come to you with a prophetic word, know that I didn't send that joker right there. Y'all hear me? If that joker still acting the way they acted yesterday, then you know they hadn't spent no time with God. They still talking the same way. They hadn't spent no time. Don't let that joker prophesy to you. Because that joker is a voice of the Lord sent on assignment to pull you out of place and out of position so that you abdicate your place of authority. You abdicate your position of authority and your place in a royal family. Y'all hear my heart. All right, then. This is the last thing I heard the Lord say. He said, I have spared no expense. And that expense is the life of Jesus Christ. I have spared no expense in my heart to deliver you, which means to bring you from the state you in, drop you off in the state that you need to be in. I have spared no expense to deliver you where you were and where you are to bringing you into the place where you need to be. He said the only way that you're going to experience the fullness of his promises, the only way that you're going to experience the fullness of divine providence, because that divine providence is not just a handout. It's not just meeting your need according to God's riches and glory. It's not just God doing exceeding abundantly above that which you ask or think. According to his power at work in you, it's not just God giving you witty inventions and making you skilled in the area of finance and financial increase and material, excuse me, increase. Mm -mm. It's God's divine protection. And that protection is only released to those who are willing to walk in his guidance. That guidance means he gets to choose the choices you make. He gets to choose the decisions you make. But the Lord, is that would just be witchy. And God is not witchy. Sure. When you sang ton, oh, that tone, tone, mm -hmm. when you sang tone song, Lord, make me over. What you said to him is make me conformable to you. Make me abidable in you. Come on here, y'all. Make it to where I fit under your shadow. Y'all hear me. Amen. And so he said, um, I have spared no expense to deliver you from where you are and where you were to the place where you need to be in order to experience the fullness amen, of my promises manifested in your lifetime. Amen. And that manifestation is not just that stuff that's going to show up out of the blue yonder sky. Amen. It's not showing up. It's not coming up out of the water. This is not beloved. It's the movie. Amen. It is not falling out of the sky. This is not airplane, the movie. It's not falling out of a tree because we're not any penny. We are partakers of the Holy Ghost, of the gift of Holy Ghost. And as such, our job is to demonstrate who we are. We are to demonstrate our identity. We are to show and to display who we belong to, where we came from, and what we are a part of. And you're going to do it one way or the other. You're going to do it because you have found who you are in Christ, or you're going to do it with the devil because you have not. Y'all hear my heart? Apostle, that's a doom and gloom message. No, sir, y'all ought to be shouting. Amen. First of all, if you're a warrior, you ought to really be shouting. Because you get to take a season away from the fight. And even though the devil doesn't see you standing on the front line, he's scared to come to your house. Because if you're not on the front line of the battleground, you want your houseman in the house. And he'd much rather meet you on the battleground because the battle is dictated by God. He comes to your house, you do as you please. Y'all don't hear my heart. It's so the scripture says, amen, um, that that he came for you to experience, not to encounter. When you encounter the promises of God, 
You just happen to fall over into it one time. Maybe two, and you never see it again. Spend the rest of your life complaining because it hadn't shown up yet. But when you experience the fullness of the promises of God, you live in those promises. You live out those promises. Oh, heck. You become the manifestation of the promise in somebody else's life. Y'all hear my heart, John 10 and 10. And I will turn my Bible over there, amen. I know, I know it, and I know y'all know it too, amen. And, and But I'm going to read it anyhow. Apostle do it didn't know John 10 and 10 because she didn't read it. Apostle McDougall knows it because she wants to, because she didn't quote it without reading it, amen. She knows it. She just wants to read it. Amen. I feel, amen, a shout coming on. I feel a dance in my feet, a clap in my hands, a swing off my chandelier, and a roll on my carpet. Amen. When I read John 10 and 10, I feel a run around my whole house. You hear my inside and out. Y'all hear my heart. That's how excited I feel when I read this John 10 and 10. When I take a look at it in my paper Bible, in my bound Bible, amen, um, and I take a look at the letters in red. Not that I didn't know it was Jesus, amen, but just something about them being read. When I take a look at that John 10 and 10, and I read that doggone thing, it's like standing in front of Jesus. And you know how it is, you and you and you blow your um your breath on the window, amen. And then you take your finger and you write in it, amen. But this right here, when you look at this John ten and ten, if you love him and you're in relationship, every time you read it, it's like you standing right in front of him, and he just said. He exhaled, and in that exhale, you saw the letters, and behind those letters, you saw a, 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 a movie, you saw a video of your life looking like what Jesus said. Oh, come on here, y'all. Look, he said in ch chapter number 10, he says, the thief come not but to steal key and to kill and to destroy. He came to steal your birthright. Come on here, in plain sight. You invited him in because you invited that voice that he sent to you. You opened up and, and told that joker everything. And then that joker refilled what you emptied. Amen, with the seed of the devil. You hear me? And now that you belong to the devil, you abdicated and forfeited your birthright. He stole it right from under you and you didn't see it. Y'all hear me? He came to steal your birthright. He came to kill your dreams and your hopes, your expectations of the manifestation of the promise of God. Y'all hear my heart? That joker came to destroy your destiny. Come on here. Your earthly destiny is you being at the right place at the right time, doing the right thing as it is mandated by God for your life. That joker stole your destiny. Come on here. He destroyed your destiny. That future of eternity in heaven with the king of all glory. Y'all hear my heart? But I got a savior who happens to be my big brother. Who took a beat down that's unimaginable out of this world. Whose skin was ripped from his very bones, whose flesh was swollen and bloody and stink, and there were flies and there were maggots and there were gnats. Y'all hear me? All the stuff that we squat all summer long. Y'all don't hear me? And then they had the nerve to put an old rugged cross on that joker's back. Come on, y'all. If my big brother is a G, y'all hear me? He's the big little G. He's the big GG. Amen. He's the big, he's the J. Amen. My big brother carried that rugged cross up the hill of Gilgotha. Y'all hear my heart? I trust everything that comes out of his mouth. He took that beat down for me. Come on. He carried that cross on his own shoulder for me. He climbed up that side of that mountain for me. When they laid that cross down on that ground, he stretched himself out. They didn't stretch him out. They didn't hang him high. He stretched himself out. And by virtue of the power he carries, he hung himself high. Oh, y'all don't hear me. And he lay there. And in his flesh, he took nails being driven through his hands and his feet. Y'all don't hear me. 
that joker took being hoisted up. And when they hoisted that cross up, the, when they settled it in the ground, the intention is that the legs be broken. Come on, y'all. That the skin be ripped because in a matter of hours, those jokers would be dead and gone anyway. He did all of that. He gave up the ghost. He gave up his sonship for the span of three days so that I could be his little sister. Y'all don't hear my heart. I trust everything that's written in here because it came out of him. Y'all hear me? He did all that. He shed all that blood with that little raggedy crown of thorns that they beat on the top of his head. He was buffeted, beat upside the head. He was spat on, y'all. Not no three-year-old spit. He was spat on. <laughs> y'all don't hear me. These jokers spat mucus and, 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 and what we used to call loogies all up in the face of Jesus, in the hair of Jesus, and he took it. Y'all don't hear my heart. He didn't take out everything that he could have taken out. Why? Because he needed that blood to make atonement for the sins that was about to be committed by me. Y'all don't hear my heart. Even with the warning, some sins I still kept committing. Shoot, some sins I started after the warning was given. Oh, they said don't do that. Let me try that sin right there. Y'all don't hear my heart. Amen. And he took all of that from me. So when I read John 10 and 10, y'all understand my excitement. Y'all understand what I see and how I see it. Come on here. The thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. And then he didn't even have to put no butt right there. He put that colon right there. Which says, I'm about to explain to you what that looks like. Come on here. Look, if he don't show up to steal, kill, and destroy, then the life and that more abundantly cannot show up in your life. Look here, y'all. Look. Look, y'all. He said, colon, I, can't, I am come that they, that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. And what is life? It's vitality. It's vigor and it's energy. And all of that is straight, spiritual, physical, ement uh, mental, and emotional. Look here, y'all. He said that you might have life. It's your birthright. I came. So that your birthright will be manifested. I died on the cross because the will is null and void until somebody dies. I died on the cross so that the will could be read. Come on here, y'all. And the only stipulation to the will is that you got to stay under the protective covering of God. Y'all don't hear my heart. You move how he moved, when he moved, and all that right there. And so life is vit vitality. Amen. It's your power to endure. It's the power to endure. I came to give you the life that causes you to endure hardship. That causes you to be patient when things aren't going your way. That causes you to be patient when the Lord says there's a delay. That causes you to be patient when God says, I deny you that. Y'all don't hear my heart. Amen. It's life is vitality and it is vigor and that's your physical strength and good health. And good health means it doesn't just mean that your physical body is healed. It means that you are complete in your physical body. You are complete in your mind. You are complete in your emotions, in your heart. You are complete um, uh, 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 um, uh, socially and in your relationships. Come on here, y'all, and you complete physically. Y'all hear me? Amen? And that's life right there. Amen? And then he goes on, and then the last part of life is energy. And that is the strength. Come on here. Strength is the capacity to overcome mentally and emotionally. It is your mental and emotional capacity to endure and to overcome. Mentally, you can endure the persecution. You're not giving up in your mind. You're not throwing in the towel in your heart. 
Come on here, y'all. It's your um, uh, mental and emotional capacity to withstand. To, that withstand means to reject and to resist the temptation and the seduction of what the enemy wants to dangle before your face because it looks like what you ask God for. Y'all don't hear my heart. It is the mental and emotional capacity, y'all hear me, to overcome every enemy attack. You are only a survivor of the attack if you can peek out the window and see the enemy laughing at you. Nah, 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 boo -boo. I come to get you. If you see the devil doing that, come on here, y'all. You have not yet met life. It means energy. It means that you are enthusiastic, that you are full of zeal when it comes to God and the things of God. Amen. Last scripture, I've got to read this to y'all or I'll get beat up because this was the original scripture. Um, the second division of the book of Psalms. Amen. Psalm, the second division, verse number seven. Amen. Um, let me read. Um, verse number seven. I'm just going to go there and stay there. I got to do eight, or otherwise it won't make sense. He says, I will declare the decree, amen, <laughs> and this is the king speaking. He said, I will declare the decree. He didn't say, I'm going to decree the decree. He didn't say, I'm going to decree the declaration. He didn't say, I'm going to decree and declare. He didn't say, I'm going to declare and decree. He said, I'm going to declare the decree. I am about to make it known, make a public announcement. Come on here. I'm about to reveal and uncover publicly before the world the decree that my God has set. He says, the Lord has said unto me, and this is the decree, this is God's decree, this is God's decree to you on tonight, I declare the decree, come on here, this is God's decree to you tonight, amen, thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee, y'all hear me, this day have I laid it all down for you, y'all hear my heart. Listen, and how do you know? Verse number 8 says, Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance. Look, not necessarily to destroy and to kill, to get them out of your way. But his first desire is to be able to bring them to you so that they can be taught and they can learn of him. So that they become a part of who you are. It's called increase. It's called multiplying and multiplication. It's called adding to you. Oh, y'all don't hear my heart. And he said, and I will give you, amen. He said, ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. In other words, he restored back to his sons. He, he restored to you as his son, your identity as the son of God. The first thing he did was restore your identity. I decree, I declare the decree that the Lord had said this day that you are his son, that you are his daughter. You don't hear me? And in that, that restoration, ask of me, and I will give you the heathen for an inheritance. I will cause them to be a part of your increase. Come on here. Look, all he did in verse number eight is restore the covenant. Of Genesis chapter number 2. Uh-uh-uh. Genesis chapter number 1 verses 26 through 28. All God did was restore to the people of God. The covenant authority found in Genesis 1 and 28. I have blessed you. Now I need you to be fruitful. I need you to be productive. I need you to be sterile. I need you to be in a position to be impregnated. Come on here y'all. And I want you to multiply. And look, in your multiplication, all you got to do is know who you are. Because I'm going to multiply you with a heathen of the earth. How do you know I used to be a heathen? And, then, and now I'm multiplied. I'm somebody's inheritance. Y'all don't hear my heart. Amen. So now y'all know. We know who we are. We are standing still. And we're not making a move. The only, be well, prior to this, the only begotten Son of God. Amen. And you say, how did God beget me? He begot you through your obedience to his word. When he released the word and you obeyed it, amen, he begot you. You became a part of his family. 
Amen. Listen, I thank God for you guys. God bless you. I pray that you know who you are in this hour so that you stand still, that you make no moves. You took some engagements that you may have to cancel. There are engagements that you're pending, you're trying to decide if you're going to take. I'm telling you now, if you've not decided, do not take it. Do not make a move until God is done. I want to restore you from the hits and blows of the last 10 or 12 battles. And in order to restore you, I need to regenerate you. I need to remove all the injured parts of your life. I need to remove all of the wounds and the traces out of your life. I need to renew you. I need to replace the things that are injured. I need to replace the things that are wounded. Y'all don't hear me. I need to replace the things that you lost or that were amputated as a result of the battle. And once I've done that, then I can return you back to myself as the rightful owner, therefore making you my inheritance. Y'all stand still. Don't make any moves. Don't make it. Make sure you go before God. And can I help y'all? If you have to stay in Him an hour, two hours, three hours to hear His yea or nay, that's your answer right there. And it's no. Go to God because of the urgency of this season. Because of the urgency of this new year. Y'all hear my heart. He will respond urgently. Amen. God bless you guys. And thank you so much for joining us. Father, we bless you for your people on tonight. We thank you, Lord God, for your word that helped make our identity clear to ourselves. We thank you for your word on tonight, Father, that helps us to see who we are in you, O oh God, that helps us to understand and to distinguish ourselves from they that are in the world, O oh God. We thank you for your word on tonight, O oh Father, that has given us strength, O oh God, that has caused us to be set on the path of our inheritance. We thank you for this time of divine um, uh, 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 of divine. Uh, providence, O oh God. We thank you for guiding our every footstep, O oh Father. We thank you, Lord God, for helping us to make the right choices and decisions. We thank you, O oh God, for opening the way for us to once again surrender ourselves to you, to renew every yes that we ever gave you, to renew every vow that we ever released in your presence and we ever released before you, O oh Father, to put ourselves back in that place, glory be to God, where we were with you in the beginning, O oh God, so that we can find where we can find out where ministry and the work thereof became more important than you did, O oh Father. Glory be to your name, O oh God, that prayer for the result of a ministry as, a, as, a, as opposed to just being in your midst and being in your presence, just having an excuse to sit and to watch you, O oh Father, where it replaced just being with you. We thank you on tonight for restoration. We thank you on tonight for the strength to stand, the strength to be still. The strength to set ourselves so that we can stand still, so that we can see and perceive, so that we can recognize that the salvation of our God is there. That we won't mistake your salvation for a prison. That we won't mistake your salvation for confinement. That we won't mistake, glory be to God, your hallelujah protection as a no but that we will recognize. Are you looking for a place to grow your ministry? Join Winning in Prayer TV Christian Broadcasting on Roku. Your ministry will be shared on social media platforms, streamed on Roku with the reach of 55 million homes. It will be your choice of day and time, professional editing, and a low weekly cost of $25 a week. Contact us today at 941 782 Eight three two two, or you can email at winning in prayer tv at gmail dot com. Again, contact us at nine four one seven eight two eight three two two. Winning in prayer tv at gmail dot com to get more information. Thank you, and hope to hear Hi, from you. Hi, my soon. name is Jennifer Reddy, and I am with Winning in Prayer TV on Roku. And here are six reasons why you should join the Winning in Prayer TV family on Roku. Reason number one, stream on Roku with a reach of 55 million people. Reason number two, reach an audience inside and outside of social media platforms. 
Reason number three, grow your ministry. Reason number four, choose your day and time to stream your content on Winning in Prayer TV on Roku. Reason number five, receive professional editing on your content. And reason number six, pay a low weekly cost of only $25. For more information, email us at winninginprayertv at gmail.com. That's winninginprayertv at gmail.com. We can't wait to hear from you and have a very blessed day.